Hello, everyone. I'm Stephen Hauser, the current president of the American Heart Association, and I'm here with our past president, Dr. Elliot Antman. And Elliot is kind enough to come today to discuss some clinical trial data that were, was released this morning in a hotline session entitled Prevention and Lipids. So, Elliot, thank you for doing this, and we look forward to your comments. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, Steve. I attended a hotline session this morning on prevention and lipids, and there were several very interesting trials that were reported, and I want to highlight just a few of them. And they actually uh, describe the polar opposites of the types of evidence that we are getting uh, from investigations, clinical investigations around the world. Uh, the first report that I want to mention was the HIJ proper trial, and this was conducted in Japan. And they sought to determine whether the addition of azetamibe, which blocks cholesterol absorption from the small intestine, to a statin, in this case pativastatin, would actually uh, not only lower LDL cholesterol, but also prevent cardiovascular events. Now that's of course something that had been shown in a very large trial called Improve It, where over 18,000 patients were enrolled and followed for over five years. So in the HIJ proper trial, uh, the investigators had some difficulty enrolling subjects. They had only about 1,700 total subjects. Uh, and they showed that they could lower LDL cholesterol. They followed these subjects for a little bit over three years, and they had a trend towards a reduction in cardiovascular events, but it was not statistically significant. And the discussant made the very important point that this was a trial that was probably on the small side and was underpowered, and they followed the subjects for an inadequate period of time. And so although there were some interesting trends, uh, there was not enough power there to show us a statistically significant result. It was a very interesting point that those subjects who had high cytostimulation levels, which is an indication of uh, increased absorption of cholesterol, seem to benefit in particular from the addition of azetamibe, and that would make sense. So this is an example of a, a very valiant effort by the investigators, but it was an underpowered classical clinical trial. And we'll contrast that uh, with a report uh, that's the new kind of research that we're, we're hearing more about. And this involves something called Mendelian randomization. Now, that sounds a little bit like it's a randomized trial. In a sense, it is. But it's not an investigator who's actually doing the randomization. The randomization occurs at conception. So these investigators pooled the information from 102,000 individuals from multiple cohort studies. And they developed a score uh, based upon SNPs. And those individuals who would be predicted to have a very low LDL cholesterol had a genetic risk score there that they identified. And they also identified individuals who'd be predicted to have a low systolic blood pressure from a similar genetic approach. So they actually were able to identify four groups of individuals from a very large cohort. Uh, they had individuals who did not have a low score for either LDL cholesterol or blood pressure, those who had only a low score for LDL lowering, uh, or uh, only a genetic risk score that said they'd have a low systolic blood pressure, or those very fortunate persons who actually had both a low LDL and a low systolic blood pressure. And they followed these patients for a long period of time, and effectively, the Mendelian randomization that these individuals had was there from birth. And that's the point. And they showed that there was not only an independent effect of LDL and systolic blood pressure lower uh, than the median, but they were multiplicative and they were cumulative. This is a very important kind of observation uh, that we're hearing more about. So this is the polar opposite, if you like, of the classical relatively small trial. This was a very large data set, and it was done with this interesting genetic analysis called the Mendelian randomization. I'll mention one other report, which is with one of the new uh, treatments, very expensive treatments, PCSK9 inhibitors. And this was a, a uh, report from the Odyssey program. It was called the ESCAPE trial. And they gave PCSK9 inhibitors, in this case, elaricumab, to individuals who had heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia. And they showed that they were able to reduce the frequency of the need for apheresis to lower the LDL cholesterol 
in the patients who received alirucumab who had heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia. So Steve, I think we heard some very interesting reports, a range of different types of research, uh, as well as some promising new therapies that uh, are just on the horizon now for us. It was an interesting session and I enjoyed being there. Thank you, Elliot. That was a great summary. We appreciate it.